Good evening, guys. And tonight we are going to talk about um, the next section in our book, which is all about Newton's law of universal gravitation. Now, this is a little bit different than our Newton's laws of motion because this deals specifically with gravity. I'm pretty sure I probably spelled that wrong, but that's okay. Um, remember before when we talked about the force of gravity on an object, we said it was equal to the object's mass times its acceleration. And, or the acceleration due to gravity, rather. And when you do that, you get the object's weight. Now, where did this A value come from? We say that A on Earth is 10 meters per second squared. On the Moon, it's considerably less, at 1.6 meters per second squared. And on Mars, it's kind of somewhere in between, at about 6. But where does this number come from? How did we come up with these accelerations for the planets? And Newton was the first one to come along and say that the force of gravity that something experiences depends on the object's mass, or the planet's mass, rather, and also the planet's radius. So if we have two different planets, one here, and of course one much smaller with a much smaller mass, like our moon, um, the radius is going to be, of course, the distance from the center of the planet to the surface. Um, this is the distance actually between you and the Earth when you're standing on the Earth. It's tempting to say that the difference between you and the Earth, the distance is actually zero because you're on the Earth. But when you're looking at um, two objects, you want to go from the center of mass of one object to the center of mass of the other. So the distance between um, you and the Earth is actually the radius of the Earth. Same thing with the moon. So the moon is much smaller, so it has a much lower acceleration due to gravity. So Newton looked at these couple of things, and he came up with a relationship for the force of gravity an object experiences. And he determined that it was directly related to the mass of the objects, to the mass of the objects, and then it was indirectly related or inversely related to the distance. And not just the distance, but inversely related to the square of the distance. So we're about to put this in an equation. You guys can see what I mean. To the square of the distance. So what does that mean? That means that if one object becomes huge, ginormous, then the gravitational force that it experiences between itself and something else is going to increase. Um, consequently, also, if the distance between two objects increases, then the gravitational force between them is going to decrease. And Newton said that this gravitational force not only exists between large objects like planets and stars and people, but it also exists between really tiny objects like um, tables and you and a chair or you and your friend. There's a gravitational force between everything that has mass. So he came up with this equation and this is a capital G. My G's kind of sometimes look like sixes. All right, he, and he said the gravitational force is equal to what he calls the gravitational constant. So G is what we call a gravitational constant. And M1 and M2 are the two masses in question, or the two things we want to find the gravitational force between. And R stands for the distance between them. So you can see in the equation that it's directly related to the mass, because the mass is on top of your fraction. And it's inversely related to the square of the distance. So the square of the distance is going to be on the bottom of the fraction. So what does this tell you? This tells you that the distance actually affects the gravitational force more than the mass does. And it affects it more because of this squared factor right here. So gravitational constant, let's talk about that guy. Gravitational constant is a funky number, but it's what you have to multiply all of this stuff by so that it makes a little bit of sense. And the value is 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th. And it's just a constant. It's never going to change. It's just like 10 for the acceleration of gravity. So let's go ahead and do a couple of examples. Um, we're going to do 
a relatively easy one first and then we will um, go on and do much larger objects. So if I wanted to find the gravitational force between me and the Earth, and let's say my mass is 65 kilograms, and the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. Now the distance between me and the Earth, like I said before, is actually the radius of the Earth, which in this case is 6,380 kilometers. So we're going to determine what my gravitational force on Earth would be using these numbers. Now it should be pretty close to 650, right? We know that the weight of me is 650 newtons. So when I do this, it should get a number relatively close to that. Here, so 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th for my g factor. And I'm going to multiply that by my two masses. One is 65 and the other is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. Now this number here needs to be converted into meters. Everything needs to be in standard SI units. So this is 6,380 times 10 to the third meters. And that number is going to be squared. So when we plug all these numbers into our calculator, we should end up with a number that is really close to my 650. So let's multiply everything that's on the top first. Give me a second while I do that part. And you get 2.6 times 10 to the 16th. And then the bottom part. And the probably trickiest thing about doing these problems is all of the powers of 10 that you have to put in the calculator. So be very careful when you're doing these. Um, you want to be sure that you're using parentheses around all of your numbers or your values are, your calculator is going to get confused and your values are not going to be correct. So make sure you put a parentheses around everything that has a power of 10. All right, and I get 640 newtons for my answer. So that is pretty close to my 650 newtons and that's actually probably pretty close to what I get if I do 65 times 9.8, which is what we know gravity to be, yeah you get 637 when you do that. So this is where that acceleration of 10 comes from, right? Or that acceleration of 9.8. When in reality, this is really what your equation looks like, right? Mass times your acceleration due to gravity, which is the weight, which is what we've learned before, is this. Okay, so let's do an example um, between two people. Let's use two different masses. Let's say the mass of the first person is 50 kilograms and the mass of the second person, let's say, is 80 kilograms. And let's say that they are standing two meters apart, just to make it a little bit easier on us for our uh, numbers. So what is the gravitational force between these two people? Same setup equals G times M1, M2, R squared. All right, remember that that g value doesn't change, so it's still 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th. I'm always going to give that value to you guys. Y'all don't have to memorize it at all. So the top part of my uh, fraction becomes 2.67 times 10 to the negative 7th. And then the bottom part of my fraction is just 4. So that gives me a gravitational force of 6.673 times 10 to the negative 8th. Now this is super small, right? This is a super, super tiny force. Um, and that's kind of to be expected because you don't really experience the gravitational force between you and your friend when you're standing a couple of meters apart, but it is there. It's just super, super tiny. Um, a couple of things about the gravitational force. It's always going to be attractive force, right? I'm not sure if we've talked about, uh, well, we haven't really said much about um, electromagnetic forces, but electromagnetic forces can be attractive or repulsive. Gravitational force is only attractive. It's only going to bring two objects together. Um, let's talk about what happens when we start changing some of these variables here and how it affects our gravitational force. So let's say uh, we have two objects and we want to, we have mass one and mass two, and let's say that we are going to double mass one. How would our gravitational force be affected in this case? Well, 
if we look at our equation, we have gravitational force equals g. And now we're going to do 2m1 times m2 equals r squared. Well, the 2 here is on the top of the fraction, so it's going to end up multiplying our gravitational force by 2. It will increase our gravitational force by 2. So let's look at that, um, but for the distance. So now, let's say instead of, ooh, let's come down here real quick. Instead of multiplying a mass by 2, instead, oh man, this thing is not cooperating with me tonight. Um, instead, let's say we're going to multiply the distance by 2. So instead of r, we're going to have 2r. It's very tempting to say that it would cut our gravitational force in half. Right? But you have to remember this squared power. This squared is going to make this 2 actually become 4 times. So we have g m1 and 2 over 4 r squared. Remember, because that squared is actually going to distribute throughout um, this term. So in essence, when we double the distance, we are cutting the gravitational force to a fourth of its original value. So you can see how affecting the distance is actually going to have more of an impact on your gravitational force than changing the masses. So let's say we have a particular gravitational force, and let's say with two masses here. And let's say we want to double mass 1, triple mass 2, and yeah, we'll just stick with that. How is my gravitational force affected if I increase the masses by this much? Well, now I have double times a triple, so that means that my gravitational force is going to be six times as large as what it would be normally. All right. What happens if I double one mass, triple the next, and then double my force? I mean, I'm sorry, double my distance between the two of them. So now I'm going to have six fourths my original force, or uh, one and a half. All right, so that's just how, this is just showing you guys how the distance is related to the gravitational force, how the mass is related to the gravitational force. Um, the math part is typically pretty plug and chug, so you guys shouldn't have very many problems when you do your uh, book work on Friday. Um, please make sure that you bring your textbooks on Friday, and um, if you have any questions, Ms. Harrell will be happy to help you guys out. But that is it, and I will uh, see you guys when I get back.